This is Twit. So when we gathered here last week, uh, it Ugh, seems like it a year ago. Last week. No, <laughs> it seems like a year ago the the, the yeah, Congress was windows. being assaulted when we gathered here last week. Um, so even though it does seem like a year ago and a lot of news has happened, we haven't talked about it on this show yet. Uh, the in the aftermath, um, Facebook, which had resisted this, banned Trump. Then Twitter, which had resisted it, banned him for twelve hours. Then finally banned him completely. Um, so did Pinterest. I didn't know the president had a big Pinterest account. Maybe he maybe he does. He's just been he was banned on YouTube, and then he's just got banned again. Uh, this time permanently. Um, Apple, uh, Google first. Uh, said you can't put Parler on the Google Play Store because uh, there's too much violent, uh, there are too many violent posts there. Apple uh, initially said you've got to moderate it and then finally said, all right, we're pulling it. Then Amazon Web Services says we're not going to host it. Then Parler's lawyers said we're not going to work for you. Uh, Parler is suing Amazon. Um, we found out that Parler, this has all happened in just, in just a matter of, days we found out the parlor had very poor security <clears throat> and that and that uh, a hacker had downloaded pretty much the entire database including all the metadata of all the photos fbi's so very that was hilarious yeah that was hilarious FBI's... apparently they used a a trial version oh, a free trial version of a security product <laughs> was that easy folks um but before parlor was banned it leapt to number one on the app store of course and uh, had many hundreds of thousands of people sign up. Gab, too. Um, it's been kind of crazy. Uh, it's been kind of nutty. Um, Airbnb just announced that they're going to cancel reservations for uh, Airbnbs in Washington, D.C. during inauguration week. There's some concern that uh, activists will come back. The number one video on, on Twitter and, and Reddit was uh, one uh, one um, insurrectionist who went to the airport and found out all of a sudden he was on the no-fly list and burst into tears. That was very popular. It's crazy. It's There's crazy. a list of, going on. First Draft News has a list of all the platforms and and what they did and when, and it's it, it's everyone you can think of: Shopify, PayPal, uh, Twitch, Kentucky you know, Fried eBay, Chicken, Reddit. Yeah, so many people, so many at Disney are, are pulling uh, their uh, donations to Republican members of Congress who uh, uh, protested uh, mm -hmm. the vote, said it was, uh, it was Bunch fraudulent. Of a lot of companies. Yeah. Um, you had Apparently an interview on be... the BBC, Jeff. Why don't you tell us about that? I could play it, but is he gone? Oh. I'm I'm here in audio, but the, your video is like that's a, all right. Audio is fine. Seconds late. Yeah. Okay. okay fine. The um his, his BBC appearance. Uh, I I just have to say it. I love you, Mr. Jarvis, and thank you for that. That was should I should I play it? Oh, thank you. I was I was afraid you were going to say I love you, but yeah, that's no. what I I thought was coming. <laughs> that's what I was going. Here, let me let me that's play. Typically, what I say here in the house to everybody else, but no. You, <laughs> the BBC, you, you, I love the you BBC's not going to take us down if I play it, right, Jeff? No, not at all. Not at all. It's on Twitter. The internet is broad Ross put it up and has many places request. to go. But let's be clear that free speech doesn't only include the right to speak; it includes the right to choose what you carry. To have uh, compelled speech is not free speech. So the platforms are perfectly within their rights to choose to carry Donald Trump or not. But isn't the problem when the platforms become so big, they're almost like public utilities, they just happen to be run yeah. by a corporation? Yeah. The platforms have opened up speech in ways that our old business of mass media never allowed. In this country, we have mass media controlled by old white men who look like me. And now the social media allowed Black Lives mm -hmm. Matter to come out and Me Too to come out and all kinds of movements. And yes, it also enables uh, the miscreants of, of the congressional riot to come out as well. Mm -hmm. But that's the nature of free speech. But isn't the problem here that you end up with the people in charge of tech companies who largely are driven by the considerations of profits, making decisions about whose speech is acceptable and whose speech isn't? 
Well, my, they are damned if they do and damned if they don't. Because for the past four years, I've heard people screaming to take down Donald Trump, to take down disinformation, to fact check the net. And then when they do, they get accused mm. of being too big. They just can't win. But the reality is, though, Jeff, that they may have taken President Trump down. They may have currently uh, disabled Parler. But you and I both know if we spent some time on Twitter or on Instagram or on Facebook or any of these platforms, we'd soon enough find people doing much the same thing. Even if we took down every bit of racist speech we could find and played whack-a-mole with it all, the fundamental problem remains that America is a racist country. So, so worrying about this moral panic of technology and social media distracts us from the real but, problem that we have in this nation. But surely you're not saying, and of course racism did predate these big tech giants, but surely you're saying their products have not affected it at all. Surely you're not arguing that the internet hasn't in some way changed the dynamic of racism within American society. I am saving that on the balance, it has brought a huge improvement. Black Lives Matter and the stories that occurred in the hashtag living while black never came out in big old white mass media because it didn't happen to them because the newsrooms were not diverse, a cause that you care about deeply. Now, finally, social media enabled people who did not have a voice in mass media to have their voice, their press. And so I strongly believe that we've got to leave this open. So in general, I'm in favor of free speech and of leaving them on there. But I'm also in favor of the platforms deciding what norms they should maintain. They have a right to do that as well. I think in the net, that the net has improved our society. The problem right now is that media are in the midst of a moral panic trying to accuse oh, you got the it internet in. Good of man. being Ding the dong. source of all of our problems, <laughs> distracting us from our real Drink. problems. But hold on, Jeff. We've seen already accounts of people forget who ended it, up buddy. outside the Capitol building, <laughs> some of them going inside it, and we've Just seen the it, stories buddy. of their radicalization. <laughs> At the center of their radicalization, every single time, is these platforms. I love how the woman it who was That's a good shot question, actually. in the Capitol, uh, her saga, according to the stories about her, started not with social media, it ended up there, but started with Fox News. Let me be very clear that the single most malign influence in all of English-speaking democracy in my country and yours is Rupert Murdoch and Fox News. That's where the jury begin, journey begins, not in social media, but in media. Jeff? Thank you very much for coming on Outside Source. We appreciate it. And needless to say, Rupert Murdoch would not agree with that categorization of himself or the products which he owns. Is, is, is this pro well, the BBC is not owned by Rupert, so I guess it's safe to say that. Not yet. Uh, Ross is great. That's Ross Atkins, yeah. who's very, very good. Yeah. Um, he started a movement within the BBC they call the 50-50, which is to, to get more diversity in their sourcing, starting nice. with gender in, in the UK, but also good. now oh, right. we're part of that. 50, yeah. Good. Good, good, good. He's very good. Thanks for playing that. Scenario. Listen, wa listening to that and watching that reminded me of a scenario that I had with a family member back east that wanted to message me with something pretty salacious. Uh, this was last year, sometime before all of this mess started happening, and it and they were all freaked out and and was just trying to give me the business about it and all. And I said, okay, well, where did you hear about this? And they told me. Um, told me Fox News. And I said, okay, fine, that's Fox News. Do you hear about this on any other platform? And they said, no. I said, so why are you just going to assume that is the gospel? Is Fox News the one and only uh, news sources out there? Why aren't you thinking critically about this stuff instead of, instead of going out and inciting more idiocy and people getting upset over something that doesn't even really exist or even matter? You know, and just the way you hit that, Right there, it just struck home with me, Mr. Jarvis. So and, and they're saying, Aunt, you were a good guy till you moved to California. And you got <laughs> so, Jeff, one of the response, and I'll include all of you in this, please, not just Jeff, but one of the th things I thought was kind of interesting was Angela, Angela Merkel uh, of Germany, and then mm -hmm. followed by uh, Emmanuel Macron of uh, France, who said, Well, we're baffled. Said, Well, this should be a government regulation not not private industries they shouldn't be deciding who to platform and deplatform but that's I, that's 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 just that's a fair ridiculous point. right on its face right? i that's think it's so, a fair so point offensive. but it's not what we they don't have a first amendment we do it, there's government here is specifically prohibited from making that kind of law well then i had a journalist from london call me uh this morning and um uh, she's doing a public she's doing a story about iran and now iranian activists are saying okay twitter you took down trump Khomeini is bad right. or worse for these reasons. Why are you taking him down? 
or why don't you go to the Philippines and do Terrate? <laughs> Good question. So they're they're constantly stuck when they set a precedent. Uh oh, now we got to enforce it across. Even just force, enforcing it across world leaders is hard. And by the way, I should say uh, it, there's two different <laughs> interpretations of what these big tech companies have done. Denise Howell, who's a lawyer uh, and uh, you know very smart on this stuff, said they did it because their lawyers came to them and said, "You are exposed." You, you are in trouble if you let this continue. You've got to stop it. Uh, others have said, well... In what way? Because... They're protected by Section 230. Well... Yeah, there's protected by 230. Mm. Okay. Yeah. That. Uh, so some have said, well, that just gave them the cover to do what they've been wanting to do. Um, True. I, so I have a theory. Does Section 230... Sorry. How far does Section 230 go? If, you know, if 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 somebody is posting plans let's this is a hypothetical if it's illegal it doesn't save you from illegality right right no so but it does save a lot of the liability. stuff that was on these things could be interpreted and and there's some you know i mean it, there's a definitely a range of interpretation of what the president said whether is that illegal is it legal is he calling for violence or is he just saying you know we got to fight for our ideals i mean th that I'm was a gray area because he's very careful look, he's very smart about not as most trolls are about not crossing the boundary into illegality. I'm so if you glad look at you First Amendment that. law, if you look at First Amendment law, you have to be very, very specific about the violence you're calling for and who specifically you're calling for violence against. It's it, cases have established that you can't. It, it's not illegal to just say I think people like this should be harmed. It has to be a, a tangible, specific, and imminent. Okay, and Aunt, you were saying? No, I was saying I'm I'm glad you you mentioned that that he was quite selective on how he put his message out uh, to mm -hmm. his. Yeah, he's not going to say followers. Go on, guys, blow it up. No, of it, it'd be a shame to see something happen to that nice yeah. Congress of yours. Yeah, like like a yeah. some have said like a mob boss. He doesn't. Oh, yeah. This is oh, what yeah. Michael that's Cohen what, always said. He doesn't Cohen have to says. be explicit. He just right. He, right. we know what he wants. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, so so this, this idea that so government should set it just surprised the heck out of me from Merkel and Macron. Um, but they don't have a First because, Amendment. I don't know. Even so, even Canada so, to have official either. speech, to have compelled speech, to have government demanded speech, the government should decide that government well, but, but is in, in this platform. The precedent, uh, in Germany, the precedent, Germany restricts your speech all the time. Yeah, like the precedent for that deal. is you can't this post. This is not restriction. You this is the opposite. You can't sell Nazi compelling. memorabilia on eBay. You can't. Yeah, but I this mean, is compelled speech. This is saying you will speech. carry Merkel. You cannot take Merkel is down. Is that what she, she meant? What she wants to say? Yeah, that's what she's saying. Doesn't you can't okay. take you can't take Trump down. Well, I think there's something to be. I do think that that's not an. Un, uh, I know it's going to you know, make you ballistic, but I think it's not an unreasonable argument that it does give uh, Jack Dorsey and Mark Zuckerberg uh, unelected a lot of power, unelected capitalists, yeah, not a lot of power. Trump was an, Trump was uh, elected. Duly elected official of the United States government. No. I, I think that that's a reasonable question mark. Should private companies be uh, unelected, you know, oligarchs yeah, be allowed to do that? Would you say this to the New I York Times? You must carry all of Trump's speeches. You must print them all. That's the equivalent. You, of course you wouldn't. Would you hmm. say to NBC? Well, wait a minute. No, stop. Hold on. Trump's Hold on. There's stop. a must carry on TV. Those are. Those are platforms. Well, that's, that's Those are that's publishers. Yeah. Twitter is not a publisher. That's not the same. It's apples and oranges. Uh, Would you tell uh, Verizon that they must run the, the president's channel? No, you wouldn't. We wouldn't do that in this country. But they have to let him make a phone call. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, look, I don't know what the answer is, but I think it's not an unreasonable position to say, it's, it's, I think it's should these big tech companies be mm -hmm. in this position? I don't like that either. How, how is it any better? Like, I agree, government control of speech is bad, but how is it any better to have a bunch of, you know, 30-somethings uh, running this gigantic company controlling Donald what Trump? people say? How is that any better? Well, and, Donald and Trump? the other side of it is, He's still the president. He could go down at any moment to the briefing room. Yeah. 
he could he I mean he it's not like he doesn't still have his bully pulpit. Right. It's not right. like a talk radio isn't dominated by dominated by conservative voices. Do you find it troubling that one of the biggest broadcasters in America, Cumulus, told its hosts you may not say this election was stolen? You've got to and right. by the way, there they own the shop. Yeah. I mean, I've been told I, if they came and said you may not call grown women girls. That'd be right. You say, be well, okay. that's because they're worried about right. their business and they want to make sure that it uh, right. doesn't offend half the audience. And yeah, that's right. within their right to do. It's their company. Yeah. Yeah. I have a um, it, theory a friend shared with me about what the platforms are doing. This is kind of a conspiracy theory, but, and there's no real evidence. But his argument was what if, what if they wanted to make, um, what if they wanted to imply an argument about, fiddling with section 230 if they wanted to say fiddling with section 230 is bad getting rid of it is bad um they could just say look without section 230 we would have to do what we're doing now all the time we have to take everybody down if they said anything even remotely bad because we'd be liable for it and why do you think trump doesn't like 230 <laughs> <laughs> right um exactly you this but no, I think I'm Matthew, I think Sunday with um, the yeah, Twit panelists. We did. That's right, <clears throat> Anne. Yep. That was that was probably the most succinct and 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 um, useful discussion about 230 because there, there's still a lot of people that are confused about far as what exactly it means to them as a regular user there, of all of these different platforms. There's Congress people who are confused. Like <laughs> there's people. Oh, most who people are, are confused. Supposed to know who yeah. are confused. Yeah. So today, Sundar, Sundar Pichai was interviewed on Reuters. Let me see if I can find this real quick. I quoted him. Uh, Reuters has had their kind of un-Davos. <laughs> Since there is no Davos this year, Reuters. Oh, no Davos. Thing. That's right. <laughs> four, you know, four days online. And Sundar was interviewed at the end of today. And he said it is the most, um, it is the thing about which most people get, get it wrong. Um, and Mike Masnick was very happy that Sundar finally started standing up for 2.30. Here it is. I've never seen anything that is so foundational that is so misunderstood. Yeah. yeah Section 230 yeah. is what promotes freedom of expression, to which Mike Basnick said, finally, I've been waiting for any of the tech execs to say this, but it's felt like they've been too afraid. Sundar is exactly right. People attacking 230 are attacking the wrong thing. Um, the, the people on the left, they think attacking 230 means attacking big tech companies. On the right, they think attacking 230 means the censors are going after me. Um there was also a great moment here. I, uh, I have to, I have to say, uh, Pachai said the same thing in his testimony to Congress in October. Mm -hmm. So it is about two thirty. Yeah, he says it's foundational oh, okay. to right. the to U.S. leadership in the tech sector. Good, good. So it's not so the first time he said that. Two, it's not just two thirty, right? The the tech platforms are protected by the First Amendment too. They can't. Yes, yeah, the they government can't Amendment regulate rights. them. Well, and also, Matthew, protects, newspaper, it's protecting against different groups. 230 protects them against lawsuits. The First right. Amendment protects them against the government. It's government, yes. And, and newspapers that have comments and forums are protected by 230 as well. The exactly. Guardian's yeah. U.S. Yeah. operation, at least, of, of comment is free is protected by 230. Uh, the other one was so, so Marjorie Taylor Greene wore her, her, her that's the, that's the uh, uh, as, as my the, representative, the QAnon uh, representative, Malinowski yeah. calls them the QAnon caucus. Yeah. She's the head of the QAnon caucus. So she wore a mask. She wore a mask today. That's the good news. The bad news is it said censored. Oh, and uh, as uh, oh, a colleague sorry. of mine said, nothing says censored like speaking freely into a microphone on the floor of the U.S. House of Representatives <laughs> while it's broadcast publicly. That's the thing that really does crack me up about this the, the conservative complaints that they're being deplatformed. Cancel culture. There are plenty of venues for conservative speech as i said talk radio being first and foremost fox news and then of course the follow-ons like oann and newsmax there's plenty of play it's plenty of venues for conservative thought yeah um and 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 they end up in media all the time they get you know QAnon. i think is a tiny um what do you want to say movement but it gets amplified by media the conservatives get amplified by media plenty yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and I, 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 my most popular tweet this week was saying, um, just by the retweets account, but was saying that, um, uh, remember that Donald Trump was not a genius at Twitter. He was a genius at using Twitter to manipulate media. He got his stuff up on media. So media, you know, they have, the, the GOP has plenty of opportunities for media. They have a whole TV network. Um, they're doing fine with their attention. Just fine.
I do worry, though, and I know you hate it when I bring this up, but I do, and I don't know what the answer is, but I do worry that Facebook in particular is a really great place to radicalize people. I guess YouTube as well. Um, I is are you just saying there's just nothing to do about it and uh, and the benefits outweigh? No, they should. They, you know, I, well, two things. I don't think we have sufficient data on that. I don't think how much we know that there has been data on YouTube that it isn't as bad as it said. But in any case, we don't get the data from the company, so it's hard to know. I don't think the research right. is is conclusive. But I'll, but let's 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 just say I grant what you what you just said, even though I don't think the data is there, or are there? The data aren't there. Um, is that yes? I think the platforms long since should have said, these are our standards of behavior here. This is our North Star, as I've said on the show often, and we should take this stuff down. I, I, I absolutely agree with that. I think that, uh, that, which includes taking Trump down, right? They had a right to take Trump down. They have a right to decide that this is their garden party. My argument this week was it's not an editorial decision. It's a social decision. If you come, Leo, drunk and obnoxious to my party and you start, start insulting my friends and I kick you out, that's not an editorial decision. That's a social decision. There's a there's a difference of gradation in how it operates, but there's still decisions and judgments I think they should make. Yes. But when they make them, they get in trouble with the right. No, and and your point with the BBC that they can't win is is well taken. I mean, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> it, it, it feels like nobody's happy no matter what they do. That hate speech you took down was my speech. Yeah. <laughs>